Hi, I'm Alan Ken. I help organizations to innovate more quickly using cloud technologies, augmented intelligence, as well as agile and DevOps practices. In this three-part series, I would like to show you how you can use GitLab hosted on IBM Bluemix to run your Azure project. Now, if you don't have an account on Bluemix, um, go to www.bluemix.net and register for a free account. I have already got an account registered, so let me just log in for now. Once you've logged into Bluemix, then you can start creating an application and use the DevOps toolchain to create the GitLab instance. And I'll show you how that works. Let's say you are going to develop your app in PHP, let's say. So what you need to do is to go create an app. Your screen may look slightly different from mine because you don't have a whole lot of apps yet. To PHP, just go Cloud Foundry Apps, PHP. Enter a unique name for your web application. This name needs to be unique across the entire internet or Bluemix users. So let's say I'm creating one for Alan Web 2. Three. Given that your unique name that you've entered is truly unique across Bluemix users, then you'll be taken to this screen here, which shows you that you can download a command line interface to, to run your Bluemix projects, or alternatively, you can also obviously use the, the GUI here. If you go to the Overview tab, scroll down a wee bit, you'll see a Continuous Delivery section. This is where you can create a delivery pipeline with uh, Git as well as um, automated deployment already configured for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enable that continuous delivery pipeline. It shows that it is going to create an issue tracker in GitLab. It is going to create a repository again in GitLab. There is going to be a, a delivery pipeline that is automated, already configured, so that when you uh, commit your code, it will automatically deliver your code onto Bluemix platform. And also there is a web IDE that you can use to change the code of your application. So all these are ready. So let me click the Create button. Now you've got all the tools configured to run your project, including your source repository as well as issue tracker and, and everything. So in order to run your Azure project, you want to use this to manage your user stories and backlogs. So let's start with the issues. I'll double click into it, and that takes you to the GitLab instance that is hosted on IBM Bluemix. There are a few setups that we will need to do. That includes creating some labels, creating some milestones, and we'll be creating a, a, a template and some board columns. So let's get started with labels. Let's do a new label. Now we use labels to tag issues. And in this case, I want to tag it with story points to start with. So I'll do a one point story and I'll make it a very light color. Like 
that's one label created then we'll create the next one in general we will be using the Fibonacci uh, sequence and we'll try to use colors that goes from sort of lighter color to the darker color We'll create two more for the story points, 20 points and 100, so 20 points. So once we've got the story points created in labels, we also want to create labels for some issue types. So in this case, we will create issue types for things like epic, we'll create an issue type for impediment, We use a red for impediments. And I'll create an issue type called defects. On top of this, if you would like, you can also create labels for some workflow states. Um, if you like, so things like in development, in testing, things like that. Uh, in this case, I'll, I'll show you a couple of labels that I would create. So let's say designing. So these are states of So these are states of the, the user stories, and we'll create one for testing or reviewing. I'll just make it generic. Right. So that would be your list of labels. All right. You've got story points that you want to use you have some types of uh, so epic impediment defect some types of issues um, you will notice that we haven't created an issue type for user stories because that's the default type when we don't label it then that is the the user story and also some statuses like building designing and reviewing uh, you know as part of the labels the next bit that we'd like to do is to create some milestones. Let's create a new milestone called Sprint Zero and give it start dates and end dates. So let's say I start on this date and a two week iteration. Obviously, your start date and due date depends on your, um, your Azure projects schedule. created one milestone, we'll create a second one. So I'll click on milestones again and create another new milestone. Again two weeks.
right now we've got two milestones so the milestones rep obviously represents the iterations in agile and then the next bit that we need to do is to create some boards I will add the default list but rather than using the doing I will use the status that we have so we've got designing building and reviewing so this is going to be our workflow for the agile uh, user stories so it starts from a to-do list and then uh, or, or backlog it goes into designing building reviewing and then eventually it's done right? now the next bit is creating a template for creating your user stories with that we will need to go to repository what you need to do is to create a new directory Now we've got um, this directory. Now the next piece is to add a new file, which is the actual template for your user story. We'll call it userstory.md. It has to end with the .md suffix. I'm copy and pasting some contents here, but you obviously need to type this out what this template will, will do is to, to give you exactly you know a template with uh, some headings such as user story, description, tasks and parent epic and gives you some sample of you know, what you need to write here or some instructions of what you need to write here if you need to break your tasks down um, here is where you can put in the tasks and also if there is an epic that we are um, we're working on then you can link the epic from here as well so let's scroll down and commit the change and then once you once you've committed to change you will notice that when you create issues let's go to issues and create a new issue you notice that now you can choose to use a particular template that you created and it will automatically fill in the contents of your user story so this concludes the first video of um, setting up for Azure projects in the next video we'll talk about how you can create a backlog and how you can use what we have set up here in GitLab to run an Azure project, manage your backlog, manage your user stories. Thanks for watching.